Hello, I'm Tony Buddle. I'm the farm manager at Harnigan Farms in Norfolk. I start every day in the farm office, uh, usually anything from half past five to quarter to six, I usually like to try and get in the office. Um, check out on the weather, um, and like most businesses nowadays, check emails as well. We have a five day forecast, um, which is very important to us. Um, today being Wednesday, uh, we've got cloud with some sunny intervals. Um, tomorrow, very similar, the same Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, the reason we want such a long forecast is because if we pull any land up today for drilling, um, we want to know that it's not going to get wet um, so we can let it dry out a bit. All right, what we're going to do now is go and have a look at a field uh, in a view of drilling this um, later this morning. Um, we're going to go and have a look and see what we need to do to the field first. Uh, this was a field that was um, vining peas. Uh, vining peas came off in um, July. Uh, it's been ploughed the middle of July. Uh, so it's, it's going to be wet, so we'll just have a look and see if we've got to pull the land up and what we've got to do to it. So what we're doing now is basically having a feel of the soil and just seeing how damp it is. Um, it's actually in quite good order. Um, I think we'll be able to leave this alone. Um, we'll come in here straight away with the cultivator drill. Um, the cultivator drill is it's been about now for about six or seven years, um, quite transformed um, the way we farm now because it actually does a little bit of cultivation and drills at the same time. Um, so uh, like I say, we'll be able to come in here now and drill. Right, we're now at the main grain store. Um, we're here to have a look and see Paul, see how he's getting on with drying the beans. Um, it's been a wet harvest. We're combining beans at the moment at about 28%. We need to dry these down to 14% um, so we can sell them to the, to the merchant. Um, the beans are wizard, uh, which will hopefully go for human consumption. Um, what happens to those is they get exported to Egypt for Ramadan. What we've got here is a uh, moisture meter and a coffee grinder. Um, the reason we have a coffee grinder is because that's about the only thing that will mash the beans up enough. What we have here is winter field beans. We're going to put them in the coffee grinder. Make quite a bit of noise here. The reason we grind them up is to get the moisture within the centre of the bean and not just the outside. Um, we now have our moisture meter. Twelve point seven percent. So these are these are nice and dry now. Um, we can store these quite safely in the barn um, until we we sell them. Right. This is the grain store now. Um, the wheat comes up through the dresser into the drawer if it's wet and then comes along this elevator across the top and what we do is we just slide these slides out we put a chute on um, and then the grain will go into the in, into the store this here is barley barley has two uh, main uses uh, one being for animal feed and the other being malting which um, can neither be used to produce beer or um, whiskey if you're in Scotland this is quite an old-fashioned store this has probably been here best part of 40 years and each of these bins holds about 40 tonne. This is the old way of storing the grain and this is the new. Each one of these stores now is 300 tonnes and the bigger stores are 350 tonne. Uh, we can store wheat, rape, barley and beans in these stores. My responsibilities here as farm manager is we've spent 12 months growing most of these crops. Um, we've now got them harvested it's now very important that they are stored correctly. Um, we have to monitor moisture you've already seen as they've come into the, into the store. We also have to monitor the temperature within the grain. Um, if the grain gets warm within the bin, um, we then get all those horrible bugs um, and insects take away. So 
I have to come down here on a regular basis, not just, just to see Paul and check that everything's all right with him. Um, he's also up here on his own for quite long hours of the day. It could be 20 hours a day quite easily. So um, we have to come up here on health and safety grounds as much as anything else just to check that he's all right and there's no problems. The reason I enjoy the job so much is being out in the countryside. Um, you get, it's like any, any job within any industry, you get highs and lows. Um, but the, the beautiful thing about the farming industry is you can just get out and get away from it all. Um, you can go and walk um, through fields, etc. You can see barn owls, deer, um, various other wildlife. It, you know, it's, it's a beautiful environment to be in. And I cannot see myself stuck in an office for eight, nine hours a day. It would, it's, not, it's not for me. I like to be outside and there's nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. And when you go home in the evening, you look back and you've, you've drilled, ploughed the field or harvested, you've actually achieved something at the end of the day. This is a field of all seed rape um, that was drilled about three weeks ago now. Um, what we do is, or what I have to do as part of my job is to walk these fields on a regular basis. Um, this time of year, these fields are quite prone to slug damage and also um, flea beetle. Um, so what we're doing now is we're just going to have a look at this field and see if we can find any slug damage or any flea beetle damage. Um, what we'll do is walk each field at least twice a week, preferably three times a week. And what we do is we walk the field in a W pattern. That way we get to see most of the field and any problems within the field. We are there to produce the raw materials. Um, a square metre of wheat on the ground will produce a kilo of wheat. A kilo of wheat is what produces a loaf of bread. I am there to produce that kilo of wheat to the highest quality possible. Um, a square, square metre of barley will produce six bottles of beer. Um, you know, again, I am there to produce the quality within the food chain. Um, we produce the raw materials that the baker, the brewer, could then take on to the to next stage. Or, on the other hand, we will produce quality um, wheat, barley, beans, etc., that could then go on to the next farmer to feed his animals, again, to produce the quality meat that we need within the supermarkets and, uh, and the local butchers. Right. right, it's now about 12 o'clock midday. Um, we're now going to go and see Donald again, just to see how he is with his ploughing, um, check everything's all right. Also just have a look at the land as well and see, see what it's ploughing over like. Again, to make a decision on when I'm hoping to bring the drill to this field. Right, what we, what we got here is this, this soil has got quite a high clay um, content within the soil. So we can, we can fall it into balls quite easily and then it's also got quite a bit of sand in it as well though because if we rub it through our fingers it feels quite gritty so this this will be known as a sandy clay soil um, within this field um, because of the year it's, it's ploughing over quite wet as well so we'll, we'll plough it we'll now leave it two or three days um, before coming back and doing any other cultivations to it and we'll get out of the way before we get run over seen is the plough go past and the tool he's just picked up on the side is called a furrow press. Now on light land that's there to consolidate the soil but on this heavier land it's to help cut the, the slices of the soil. As you can probably see there's quite some big lumps of soil in, in the farming trade known as horses heads okay because that's it's the size of a horse's head um, and the idea is we just slice them and we shall help them get they'll be smaller and will dry out a lot better for when we come through to break them down in the future, it'll be a lot easier. Farming is now quite a technical job. It's no longer a case of, um, I can't read or write, but I can drive a tractor. That, that is no longer the case within the industry. Um, the machinery we use now is very modern, up to date. We have GPS guidance. Um, we are recording everything as we go along the field. Um, the agrochemicals, the fertilizer, etc. Everything is recorded now and it's no longer a case of, um, you know, you've got to be a very intelligent person, a very skilled person. 
Right, I've just come to the field now, have a look at the combine, have a quick word with the combine driver, David, see what the beans are like, have a look, quick look at them, see what the quality is like, more importantly, and just check that everything's okay. If we cut the roadways in, that'll just let the air. Yeah, let the air flow for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I say, as long as we've got 15 ton or so for. Yeah, that'll be all right. Yeah. Right, what we've got here is a sample of freshly cut winter field beans. Um, these have two uses, um, one of them being animal feed for protein within the UK. Um, because these look a nice clean sample, um, and they haven't got too many of these holes in, these will actually go for uh, human consumption and go to Egypt export for Ramadan because um, that's all they'll eat during Ramadan is beans. My role within the farm, I am the spare man. Although I manage the farm, I am also the spare man. I must be able to drill, plough, spray, drive the combine. Um, not necessarily as well as the men on the farm, but I must be able to do that and that is what I will do during the course of the day is wherever needed I will be the spare man. Right it's now um, about 3.30 in the afternoon everything else is going well on the farm the combines running the plows running fine the grain stall there's no problems uh, as I said earlier I'm the spare man it's now time for me to hop on a tractor and go and drill some rape so that's what we're going to do. Right, that's me done for the day. Uh, it's now half past six in the evening. Um, drilling is finished. We're still combining, um, but that's, that's farming. I'm now gonna go back to the office and do some paperwork. Um, I hope you've enjoyed following me for the day. Um, look forward to seeing some of you within the industry and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Top tip for anyone wanting to come into the uh, industry, preferably a young person, probably the first thing to do is get yourself involved um, at one of the good agricultural colleges, learn the basics, but you've got to get out there and get on a farm somewhere um, and, and learn from other farmers and see how things are done. Um, it's hard work, but it's, it's good fun.